Trinity Sunday. We continue on page two of our service leader. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. 
of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you're a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, You must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, 
How can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of God, Son of Man, be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. So where does it come from? Well, I'm not exactly, completely, totally sure, but I know that the Trinity was discussed very soon after the, the various uh, leaders of the church began to get together and began to talk about spirit and, and Jesus and God. And I know that in the first chapter of Genesis, there is mention of the spirit moving over the water. And so this idea of spirit and Son and Father being a part of God is from the very beginning. The problem is the word Trinity is not used specifically and the idea has to be kind of cobbled together. One of the cobblers was a man by the name of Athanasius. He uh, participated in, in a minor way in the, in the Council of Nicaea where they came up with the Nicene Creed. You know, we, we read that on a regular basis, uh, just about every Sunday in church. And they were trying to kind of put their rules and understandings together because there were other people who were beginning to say, well, no, this was what was meant, or this was what was meant. And they were trying to make sure that it all kind of came together in a doctrine that was accepted and understood by all the people who were followers, who were believers, who were followers of the way. Well, Athanasius um, wrote another creed, and uh, we all will give thanks in just a moment that it was not the one chosen for us to read in church on every Sunday. If you would like to see, and trust me, you would, the uh, Creed of Athanasius. I would invite you to take out your prayer book. It's the red one in the pew back in front of you. And turn to page 864. It's like in junior choir, the one to get there first, raise their hand, they get the prize. Yes. Page 864, halfway down the page, and then the rest of the page on 865. It's a longish creed. And, uh, but I, I have come up with something to make it more palatable. I don't know if this is gonna work because I think my microphone is not working, but let's see if we can get to this. Okay, if you can, I'll hold it up to it just in case it's working. Everyone to equal and 
So I don't know if you'd like to go through the rest of that. We can do that at coffee hour. Uh, and I mean hour, because it will take a while to get through it. It is the Creed of St. Athanasius being chanted. What a beautiful thing. Uh, seriously, we add about 20 minutes to our service every Sunday were we to do that. Now, if you read the Creed, and I'm going to let you do that on your own, uh, you'll notice that it is a marvel of contractual information. That, uh, for instance, there's one person of the Father, another of the Son, another of the Holy Spirit, but the Godhead of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost is all one, the glory equal, the majesty co-eternal. The Father uncreate, the Son uncreate, the Holy Ghost uncreate, the Father incomprehensible, the Son incomprehensible, and the Holy Ghost incomprehensible. They're all also eternal. The whole thing is kind of incomprehensible. You know, the different saints are chosen by different trades. I mean, St. Joseph is the, is the saint of carpenters. Uh, I think if St. Athanasius is the saint, he would be the saint of lawyers. <laughs> Athanasius did other things that were important. He is considered the first uh, by some experts to have listed all 27 books of the New Testament in writing for the first time, and yet this is a most difficult creed. And I guess it leads us to the fact that the whole idea of the Trinity has been difficult for the church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh, I don't know about you, but when I hear that, I almost automatically want to start crossing myself. But others who have heard that in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit have been those who have confessed to the belief in that Trinity and endured persecution through the ages. There are martyrs who have heard that phrase and who have been willing to shed their blood. There have been missionaries who went into the worst of all possible conditions to spread the word because of their faith in the Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In fact, when you think about it, it took somebody who believed in that doctrine of the Trinity to make sure that we were here today. Somebody who believed in the Trinity of God invited us at some point in time to come to church. Now, it may have been our parents, and it wasn't so much an invitation, but nonetheless, they got us here, and and I would hope that we are pleased that we are here. We are, each and every one of us, created by God. And God walked among us, physically on this earth in the person of Jesus. And God is with us still through the Holy Spirit. God is then creator, redeemer, sustainer. There is a passage from Scripture where God demands from someone else an extreme sacrifice. He demands of Abraham that Abraham kill his son Isaac if he truly believes and if he wants to be the one to carry on God's work of the world. But God in the crucifixion gives his own son, God's self, to defeat death for us. The resurrection is God as creator bringing life back to fleshly form in the power of the Spirit. That's the theology of the Trinity. But let's think of some images of the Trinity. One image of the Trinity is that of an egg. An egg with its shell on the outside it's albumen, which we call the white, and it's clear until it's cooked, you know that. And then that wonderful yellow yolk that's inside. The one that has all the um, cholesterol in yeah. it.
That's one image that's been used to describe the Trinity through the ages. Another is that of an apple. And I know that an apple is mistakenly thought to be part of the Genesis story, but there's no mention of the apple in Genesis. That's Sleeping Beauty. <laughs> there's mention of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And those who are botanically inclined believe it was probably a pomegranate. But nonetheless, the apple is used as an image of the Trinity because it has that wonderful outside, which is the skin. It has the, the part that we all eat and enjoy, the, the flesh, and, and then the inside, the core, and the seeds. All of those are part of one apple has all three parts. Another image is that of water. Can you guess how this one goes? You've got water, liquid, you've got Solars. Solars. Ice. Ice. ice, and steam, and steam yeah. which can burn the heck out of you if you're not careful when you're cooking. But yes, three parts, one uh, image. Water is incredibly life-giving. We have to drink it. We don't have to drink 64 ounces a day. That's another fallacy, along with the apple, you know, Eve and all that kind of stuff. We do have to drink a fair amount of it, and I guess at least one resource that I read said infants are about 80% water. As we grow into male, uh, we're about 60% water. Women are about 55% water. And the elderly, and I don't know that that applies to anyone here, are about 45% water. It might have something to do with how often we use the restroom, I'm not sure. Water is incredibly powerful. Ask the people who suffered those floods in San Diego this last January, or the people in the Midwest who are going through what they're going through, rains and floods. But it's also the antidote for wildfires. You put them out using water, among other things. But how powerful is it? Have you ever been to the Grand Canyon? I got a chance to whitewater raft through the Grand Canyon. It was a working holiday. I also did a baptism at a wedding while I was on that little boat ride. But I'll tell you, there's something about being in a um, a pneumatic um, vessel and going through the canyon with its white water and there's something that guarantees you that you understand the power of that water and how it could carve out that canyon. Now, I'm going to speak of something very fond to the person in the front row here. Uh, she is very fond of um, water which cascades down and in fact, I happen to know as a fact that she has been to three of the greatest waterfalls in the world. Niagara, anybody been to Niagara? Very powerful, very powerful. But not nearly as powerful as Victoria Falls, which you have also been to, on the border of Zimbabwe and Zambia. Niagara is on the border of Canada and the US, but then the greatest fall of all, Iguazu. Iguazu, which is on the border of Argentina and Brazil. Correct, according to my notes. <laughs> You've been there. Yes. I would trust you. There's something about waterfalls being on borders. I'm not sure exactly what that is between countries. But there is something about being in the presence of that water as it cascades down over the 80 meters or more and, and falls with such incredible force. I guess it just makes you want to get into a barrel and go over. <laughs> Maybe not. Now, one other image of the Trinity, and this is one that's kind of fun, at least it is for me, is that in cooking, French chefs combine onions, carrots, and celery and call it mirepoix. Um, and they dice and cook them in fat 
for a flavorful base, to give richness to whatever else they're making. Spanish chefs take onion, garlic, bell peppers, and they add tomato to make sofrito. Same idea. But the ones who get it right are the Cajuns, the Creole cooks. Their base for jambalaya, gumbo, and etouffee is onions, bell pepper, and celery, called the Holy Trinity. <laughs> That's what it's called. They don't even use the words onions, bell peppers, and celery. They just say, Holy Trinity, please. And then, when they want to really add flavor, they add the Pope. <laughs> Garlic. <laughs> I don't know if popes have always had bad breath, and that's why <laughs> garlic is used for them, but the point is, the Holy Trinity, whether it's in cooking, to add deep, deep flavor, or whether it's spiritually in our lives, adds the depth that we need for our faith to grow. I, I hope that somehow, someway, the power of the Holy Trinity is recognized in your life and that your understanding is sufficient to make sure that that particular theology is more than that. It's a relationship. By the way, these things are for sale, I'm trying to make a little extra money for vacation, but I'll talk with you about that later. of all those who struggle with doubts or disbelief, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For renewed witness to the gospel among Christian people in positions of public trust, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our assembly, as we hand on the faith of our ancestors from one generation to another, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the power to live out the promise of our baptism, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
For all the sick and the suffering, the lonely and the dying, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Please add your own intercessions here. Continue healing for Ken and Chris. Amen. 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 Michael. Amen. Amen. Roger Brown, Iron Duet, Vietnam. Amen. Amen. In the communion of the Holy Spirit, with Mary, the mother of the Son of God, and with all the saints in light, let us commend our lives and the lives of one another to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. We pray for the soul of Patty, and we pray for her daughter, Tanya. Amen. 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 Almighty God, with tender love, we call you our Abba. Answer the prayers of your children gathered here, for we rely on you and have confidence in you. We ask this through Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our name. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Amen. Let us greet one another by sharing Christ's peace. Peace. Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good your vows to the Most High.
our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For with your co-eternal Son and Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, in trinity of persons and in unity of being. And we celebrate the one and equal glory of you, O Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say in prayer.
Let us turn to page 13 to say our concluding prayer. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are good members of the body and blood of Son, and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. May God the Holy Trinity make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side, and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Please be seated unless you'd like to come forward for a birthday prayer, a traveling prayer, an anniversary prayer. A new San Francisco Giants shirt prayer. <laughs> There was smack being talked up front here. <laughs> Not the appropriate thing for church. Goodness gracious. Uh, John, what are you celebrating? Uh, the Lord's birthday was on uh, Tuesday. Ah, great. Uh, happy birthday to you. Mary? Well, my granddaughter Ava is birthday, and she's also graduating from high school and going to college at the same time. Oh, Why? Wow. All kinds of good stuff. We're traveling for a month. Uh, we're going to Tyler, then we're going back to Midwest, and we won't be back till the, after the 4th. Wow. So, we need safe travel. Bon voyage and a good credit card. Well, <laughs> you know, we're driving, so we need steady hands. Yes, okay. Very good. Okay. Please do, a, do us a favor, bring back a uh, kind of a chart of how much gas costs in the very oh, 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 oh. They make us sick here in California. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. a lot cheaper. Actually. Yeah, okay. Don't do us that thing. <laughs> so, birthday, birthday, graduation, and travel. All right. Let us pray. Gracious God, we ask your continued blessing upon those as they make their way through life. Um, we ask that you would bless those who have graduated or are graduating, uh, give them a sense of purpose in the classes that they take and uh, the disciplines they pursue, help them to find what means a lot to them and what serves you, and do those things with your help and grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Be with those who travel, keep them safe every step of their journey. Help them to enjoy their relatives and friends as they reconnect. Help them to share your love with them and have your love shared with them. We ask that you bring them back safely to those of us who love them here in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Watch over thy children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrow. Raise them up if they fall, and in their hearts may that peace which passes understanding by all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Safe travels, happy birthday. Congratulations. You know that we've talked about how the church has a a little bit of a struggle only in the sense that um, to the world, this is Memorial Day weekend. To the church, this is Trinity Sunday. And um, so I tried to look up some prayers, and we have a great uh, bunch of prayers kind of at the back of the prayer book, in front of the Athanasian Creed, after the Psalms. And um, I looked for those that would maybe be appropriate for Memorial Day. I found one that kind of fit the bill. So I went on the internet and found some more prayers. I made 
several copies of these prayers in case any of you would, because I'm not going to share them all with you today, but maybe you'd like to take them and share them in your own homes on Memorial Day um, as we keep in mind that incredible sacrifice that has been made for us through the generations uh, from the very beginning of this country uh, until now. And uh, we obviously thank all those who served, but those who served and gave the ultimate. If any of you have been to uh, Normandy, we had a chance to go a couple years ago and go to that incredible uh, American cemetery there and see the row after row after row of monuments for, and when you look at their names and you look at their dates, and they were almost all 18, 19, 20 year olds, uh, almost a generation who gave, uh, an entire generation who gave their, gave their lives so that the world could continue in a modicum of peace as much as we were capable of doing apparently. But um, anyway, war is not something that we want to raise up, but we do want to raise up the sacrifices that have been made. So I'll share with this with you this one prayer and then another that I printed out, and then anybody who wants a copy, uh, I have them at the back of the church. Let us pray. Almighty God, we commend to your gracious care and keeping all the women and men of our armed forces at home and abroad. Defend them day by day with your heavenly grace. Strengthen them in their trials and temptations. Give them courage to face the perils which beset them. And grant them a sense of your abiding presence wherever they may be. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, who sees all of the hurt and comforts, we ask you to comfort the heart of those who have lost loved ones in the military. It might seem unfair, but you, the God who ordains our days, keep us in mind that those families are still grieving today. Remind them of your love for them. Their loss provides for a safe place for us and to live and worship you. Keep those families close to you, your heart today. Comfort them and let them know we do not forget their loved ones' sacrifice. Amen. Amen. And finally, this is also a prayer book. <clears throat> Eternal God, in whose perfect kingdom no sword is drawn but the sword of righteousness, no strength known but the strength of love, so mightily spread abroad, abroad your spirit that all peoples may be gathered under the banner of the Prince of Peace as children of one Father, to whom be dominion and glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. Dale? A reminder about Holy Half Hour Bible Study. We've had a little hard time. It's like the diaspora. Everybody's spread to all corners of the earth. And it's been a little hard to get everybody together. But I'm hoping everybody sort of filters back in. And I think we're going to be in good shape this, this coming Tuesday. So we're going to show them back up again. So that's real fun. At any rate, we're getting into the point in time in the Gospel of Mark where Jesus enters uh, Jerusalem for the final, uh, for his final uh, um, um, passion. And it's getting good. So look forward to seeing you. If you want to find out how to how to get on online and participate, go to the news from the pews, and you'll be able to see Holy Hour Bible Study. Click on that link, and you'll go right in. Look forward to seeing you. Thank you, Sheila. Uh, please join us again. We offer some many goodies. Okay. Anything else? Have a safe and uh, blessed Memorial Day weekend. Let us sing hymn 368.